Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna have a financial discussion about uh, real estate and the, the value of homes, okay? Um, so for those of you that don't know, my background is accounting, okay? So before I became a gun instructor, I was an accountant for many years. My last job was a chief financial officer for an import-export company, okay? So um, I'm gonna share with you guys uh, an idea, right? A philosophy that I, that I came up with back in the 1990s. I'm probably not the only one that had this philosophy with regards to real estate, um, but I came up with it on my own, right? And that is that the value of a property or a home or a building, whatever you're looking at, it doesn't matter whether it is, um, you know, whether it's uh, residential or commercial, the value of that property. Um, is equal to the value of the land that it sits on, okay? Uh, the the value of the building materials, okay? And the value of the labor to basically build it, okay? So uh, three things, the, the, uh, the land, the building materials, and the labor. Now, if this is an income-producing property, right, um, so if this is, let's say, a, a, a property that you would be renting out or would be generating some income, um, then I would basically factor in uh, the revenue that I would expect it uh, to generate uh, over, let's say, a period of, I would average about seven years, okay? So within seven to ten years, okay, uh, I would want to fully recover whatever money I put into this property within now, and I know if you talk to, uh, to real estate agents, they'll tell you 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. You know what? That's not how I made money in my life, right? My my way of making money, all right, is the way I, you know, the way I created enough money to be able to do all the things that I do today uh, is any money that I, if I invested, I wanted that basically fully make back my money. Um, ideally within five years, but I was willing to accept seven, maybe 10 years, okay, um, to recover my money. And then after that, uh, everything after that's a gravy, right? That's just money coming in. And then all I have to do is just, um, you know, just basically maintain the property, okay? So uh, that's not me following the book, okay? That's me basically uh, making up my own rules to make sure that I am successful. Okay, so so that's my thoughts on investing in a business. You want to make whatever money you invest into it. Uh, ideally, you want to make your money back within five years or sooner, maybe seven years. Uh, Ten years is like extreme as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, going back to what I wanted to talk to you guys about, when it comes to uh, when you're looking at buying a home, those are the three things that I consider, right? You know, if it's going to be a non-income producing property, meaning you're just going to live in it, you're not going to be renting it out or using it to generate, you know, or working out of it or anything. The the value of the land, the value of the building materials, and the value of the labor. Okay, so whatever it would cost to recreate that, okay, uh, is what I consider the value of that of of that property. Okay, now, uh, now from from that point, right, from the point that it would be built, uh, the property does not appreciate in value. It depreciates in value, okay? Now, the land itself may not depreciate, but the building itself is going to depreciate, okay? Every year, uh, it's going to start getting, the wood's going to start rotting. The, you know, the, 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 basically, that has to factor in. So when, pe uh, when people look at a property with, or look at buying a property, uh, with the in, with the intention of they're gonna buy and then down the road they, it's gonna appreciate in value. Um, I mean, for me that is a uh, that, I mean that that's a bad uh, that's a bad investment approach. Okay, uh, the the chances that you're gonna fail, right? That you're not gonna be successful uh, is, in, in my opinion, is a lot more than you are going to be successful. Now you might stop and say, hey, wait a second, what are you talking about? Pro property values and home values have been going up for the last whatever 100 years or whatever um but the thing to understand is it's not the value of the home that has been going up what's been happening is is the value of your money has been going down okay um so it's not that the property has been appreciating it's that your money has been depreciating and basically it seems like 
your the value of your home has gone up okay but, you know when you look uh, let's say i got a shovel from the year 1900 right that moves five pounds of dirt okay and then i got a shovel from the year 2022 that moves five pounds of dirt okay so one shovel from 1900 one shovel from uh 20 uh 2022 right or whatever year okay the value of both of those shovels is they move five pounds of dirt it's not that maybe i paid 25 cents in the year 1900 and i'm paying whatever 20 dollars in 2022 okay the value of the shovel has stayed the same uh the only thing that has changed is that the the money has depreciated okay so when you're looking at real estate that's the way i recommend you get, everybody looks at it look at it in terms of what's the value of the land what's the mountain value of the building materials that went into it what's the value of the labor uh that went into it okay um so the other thing i'm going to put out here for you guys is uh, i want you guys to consider that uh when people look at the uh you know, at, 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 at the value or rather the, the, the sales price, right? Because again, we're talking, you know, we're not, we're not talking about the value of the property, but the depreciation of the money, which we see as an increase in the price, okay? The only people that benefit from the increase of the price of a property, okay, is the tax collectors, okay? They're the only people that benefit, all right? So a lot of times I'll, I'll hear people say, hey, my house has basically doubled in value, okay? Okay, number one, you're still living in it, right? So even though the the, the they, what's really happened is the value of your money has, has if it's doubled in value, what's really happened is that the dollar has lost half its value. But even for the person that's looking at it from the perspective of hey, it's doubled in value, okay, for you're living in it, right? You, the fact that it's it's doubled in value does not benefit you in any way. The only person that benefits from that is the tax collector uh, who basically is going to, because your property tax is going to go up, okay? Uh, and it, it's different, you know, from area to area. In some places, they assess it every 10 years. But it, the bottom line is if, the, if it appears that the, your, the value of your house has gone up, sooner or later, the tax collectors are going to want to tax you on that, okay? So you don't benefit from living in that house that you think has doubled in value okay now if you go to sell the house right because you got to sell the house now to get that money well you gotta go live in another house right so again what are you gonna do you're gonna sell this house you got doubled your money well now you're gonna go what live in the only way you're gonna somehow get money out of this is if you go live in another house that's like half the size right or half the value of that house so if you move from let's say uh you know, for, for, to, to a cheaper house. I mean, is, I'm, so the point is that that makes no sense. Okay, uh, you don't benefit from a price appreciation uh, in the value of the house that you're living in, right? Because you got in order for you to actually get to benefit to, to actually see that money, you have to sell it, and then what are you gonna do? You gotta take that money, and now you gotta go buy another house, right? So the money's going to go straight into that one. The only thing that might happen now in all that is now you've got to pay a tax on the capital gain. So the the, the thing with capital gains on uh, on a house, if, if you have a capital gain, uh, you pay a tax on that. You know, the, again, the only person that's benefiting from that is is the government. Okay. Now there's are exceptions in the tax law where if you sell a house and then you immediately buy another house, uh, the basis kind of rolls over into the other house so that you don't pay it you know so anyway that's that's all tax bs we're not gonna we don't need to get too deep into that but i just want the point that i want you guys to understand is that um that you don't benefit from the an increase in the property in in, in what what appears to be an increase in the property value now the other thing i want to i want you guys to understand is part of the reason um why the uh the, the value of houses sometimes seems to increase um, is because of bank lending, okay? So here's the thing, consider it like this. If banks stop lending money, okay, everybody has to buy a, the house with whatever money they have saved up, and that's it. And, and don't think it can't be done. I've, I've done it twice, okay? Uh, I don't pay interest to banks, okay? I do not pay interest to banks, okay? This property over here, Pay cash for it. I do not pay interest to banks. Okay, that's 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 a good way for when you're in your twenties. That's what you should be planning for. Okay, you should be planning.
or down the road you're going to buy a house you saved up that money so that you can buy that house without having to to pay the price uh three times over to the bank right because if you buy a house for let's say half a million dollars by the time you're done paying it back you're going to give the bank a million and a half dollars right so you're going to pay three times over um so uh the thing to understand with banks if when banks are lending out money what they are really doing is they are artificially inflating the value of of, of these houses and and what do i mean by that so again if you had to buy the house just for cash just the money that you have you know in your savings account right um you're going to be very conscious about what you're what you're paying for for that house okay however if you've got a bank that's willing to lend you money right and then also willing to lend the other guy and the other guy and the other guy right so now you've got everybody over here bidding up the price of these properties with money that they don't have right so basically the casino right which is the bank is lending you money so you can gamble basically okay that's that's what's really happening here um so the banks are lending money to everybody everybody feels that they have all this extra money so on a house that let's say the value of it is only let's say whatever a hundred thousand dollars because everybody's getting money from the banks to you know everybody's bidding up the price so now you know even though the, the the price of the land the price of the materials the labor costs might only total up to a hundred thousand dollars because everybody's coming to the table with money that the bank has is lending to them now they're willing to bid up the price to two hundred thousand and three hundred thousand on a house that's only worth let's say a hundred thousand okay so the banks artificially inflate the value of these homes just by being willing to uh, to lend out money to everyone okay and uh, we saw that back in 2008 why the real estate prices go so high because the banks were just basically just throwing money at people and people were like hey you know why shouldn't i be willing to offer more you know to, to make a higher bid right i got the bank back banking uh, you know backing me up here okay and also they're thinking in the back of their mind hey you know if i pay for this house that let's say is only worth a hundred thousand they're thinking okay so i'll pay three hundred thousand for it but hey, you know, in their mind, it's like real estate prices are going up. You know, a couple of years down the road, I'll sell it for half a million or, or a million dollars, right? So, so that's what people are are thinking, right? And I'm I'm telling you guys, the 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 logically, you know, looking at this logically, okay, the value of a home is worth the land, the building materials, and the labor to to build it okay that's what the, the the home is worth now that's what the home is worth now if this is an income producing property right then I, then basically i would evaluate the income that that is uh likely to generate okay so again uh, a, a quick easy way to figure out to, you know this is a number i would add to it uh if you know i, I want to have i want to fully recover my money let's say within five years all right so whatever money i expect that this will generate over the next five years right so let's say it's just random number let's say it's going to generate uh ten thousand dollars per year okay over the, when i want to fully recover so that's fifty thousand dollars over five years so i would take that fifty thousand dollars and i would add it to the value of the land the building materials and the labor okay so you know so those three things plus that fifty thousand dollars you know and that's the price i would put out for this okay um so my thoughts on this you know i hope you, if you guys got different ideas by all means put it in the comment section uh but but you know again when you're looking at real estate appreciating in value it's not the value of the property that's going up it's the value of your dollars going down okay thanks for watching i'll talk to you all soon